Now this is parity check. This is again one method that is used by two different devices when they exchange data to check the corruption of the data, whether the data that has been reached is uh, okay data or somewhere during the transmission of the data it has got corrupted. So these are three bytes which are being transferred. Now let's suppose, achha, number number two, this parity check can only be with the text, non numbers. Okay, means all those characters which are under Unicode or ASCII, they basically apply this parity check. All right, this parity check doesn't work with the numbers. <coughs> As I showed you earlier, that all of the ASCII codes are starting from zero and going up to 127. So it means that only first right to left I mean first seven bits are utilized the eighth bit is not utilized in the text so any ASCII number that is within 0 and 127 can be accommodated in first seven bits so what basically happens system uses this particular last bit sometimes we call it yeah most significant bit and this would serve as the parity bit in all these three bytes. Now let's suppose this first byte is basically is A and this second is B, this third is C. So A is basically 65th position in ASCII, B is 66 and C is 67. If we convert this into binary in these bytes, this would be sixty-four sixty-five. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and sixty-four. Sixty-six would be sixty uh, sixty-six would be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 67 would be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Now what basically happens in parity that the, there are first of all there are two types of parity. Either these are even parity <laughs> or the other one is odd parity now what system does system basically first decides when two computers communicate they first decide whether they would use even parity or odd parity most of the systems in the world they are running even parity now what basically happens in this parity if it is even parity I'll take all of the examples with even parity and we will solve two questions from past papers one with odd parity and one with even so no worries in even parity what basically happens the computer which is sending data first counts the number of ones in the byte so let's say the byte which is representing a how many number of ones are there two, two. so it that number is already even. even so we would just put a zero there with B, how many numbers of 1's are there? 2. two. So it is already even, so we put 0 there. Three. How many numbers of 1's are there? So it is odd. And we are using number of 1's is 3 in C. And 3 is an odd number. So basically we would put 1 by R cell to make it even. Alright. Now these bytes gets transferred to the sender, uh, so to the receiver computer or device. And that device recalculates number of one. And if those two divide, uh, devices have already decided that they will use even parity, in that case, the receiver will count the number of ones in the received byte. And if it is even, then it would say it is okay byte. That's about it. So every byte that is being transferred is under either the even parity or odd parity paradigm. The receiver checks the number of ones. If these are even in even parity and odds are in odd parity, then receiver says it is okay. If it is not, then receiver informs back to the 
sender that this byte has not been received properly so please resend it now why do we have such problems now suppose during the transmission of the data one of the byte sorry one of the bit in a byte has uh, been dropped means one became zero or gain means zero became one in that case the parity would get out out of form for example even parity in a suppose the first one which is basically this sorry this one this one gets dropped and it reaches to the receiver as zero then the number of ones remains in the byte is one so which is an odd number although the parity the those two computers were using was even so receiver would have an idea that oh this parity is odd this parity is odd so it would inform the sender that the uh, byte that has been received is corrupted now there is a problem with this system what if these two bits number one let's say this and this they both get dropped in that case parity would remains okay even. even and the receiver would have no idea that the byte that has been received is corrupted or not although it is corrupted because the even parity remains even similarly this could happen that two ones are gained here so even remains even so this is the only flaw in this particular parity check system so in order to cope up with this flaw instead of sending byte by byte system uses longitudinal parity which is basically referred to as block parity in your syllabus so let's see how block parity works block parity in block parity what happens the, the flaw of single byte parity in which if two bytes get dropped or gained even remains even and odd remains odd and this receiver would have no idea that what happened during the transmission of data even the data is corrupted receiver would still receive it as it is okay because even parity remains there now in order to cope up with that instead of sending single byte a block of bytes is sent but before that block of bytes is uh, sent uh, there are two types of parities now would be added to it let's see how okay now in this case you see that these three bytes are being transferred so first usual most significant bit will be taken and parity will be added to it so this byte the last bit would still be used for uh, parity so one and one even parity is used is being used over here again so this is zero this is zero and this is now one but with this linear uh, side line side uh, in addition to that there is a column side parity as well this is that is column parity so now in this case every column would be added so this particular byte would be called parity byte g so this would be 0 0 remember if there are all zeros in the column then the then it remains 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 this this would be 1 to make it even and this would be one as well so this particular bit this one would be the parity of parity, parity, parity. <laughs> all right parity. now what basically happens so let's suppose during the transmission this particular uh, byte let's say this one is now gained this has become one instead of zero this has become one now what happens when this is received uh the receiving computer would check every parity whether it is in a row or in a column so it would check and in the that case this parity is correct this is incorrect it is marked this is correct this is correct and then columns are checked this is correct this is correct this is correct this is incorrect 
this is correct 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 and correct so now what would happen that system would mark the column and row and at the intersection of it at the intersection of it basically it would say that this particular bit has gone corrupted so it would ch change it itself matlab it would not ask back the sender to send it back rather it is uh, doable at the receiver's end that is why it is called self correction mechanism so in block parity there is a self correction mechanism let's see few past paper questions let's take this past paper question describe how parity can be used to identify and correct the single error in this transmitted data block so data block says that it is uh, block parity okay so now let's first check what sort of parity is being used so there is one error single error so it means that all of these bytes would have same parity but one so let's first find out whether it is odd parity or even so if you see number of ones in the first row 1 2 3 4 5 it is odd. odd in second it is 1 2 3 4 5 so it means that it is this is odd parity so we have to find one byte that has even number of ones rather than so so this is 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 so this one is basically this 1 2 3 4 5 this one is basically corrupted okay so similarly we have to check uh, the parity of the column as well so right second 1 2 3 4 5 so this one okay so this one so let's draw a line One two three है बेटा। Sir left से second column में it has four to five। Yeah, so this particular uh, bit is basically the one that got dropped. So, so what would happen? What would happen? That we will make it one by ourselves. So this is basically the bit that got dropped. So this is how you find uh, the corrupted bit.